All right, so we're talking about section 5.4, uh, which deals with complex numbers. So we're going to introduce uh, imaginary numbers and then how those look for uh, combining an imaginary and a real part to get our complex numbers. So we start with the definition, uh, and we define i to be the square root of negative 1. Um, so it is because it is. We've defined it as such, and we build off of that definition. Uh, so first thing we do is we call this our imaginary component. We look at some patterns within i. Um, and so i equals i, and if we square everything, well the square root of negative 1 undoes the square root, um, and we are left with negative 1. If we take i to the third power, we get i squared times i, and i squared is negative 1, so we're left with negative i. And then if I take it to the fourth power, I get i squared times i squared, negative 1 times negative 1, which gives me 1. i to the fifth is i to the fourth times i is back to i, so I've started repeating my pattern uh, and I can use this pattern to look at powers of i that are bigger than uh, 5. So let's say, for example, I want to simplify i to the 30th and i to the 104th. Well, what I'm really trying to do is figure out how many i to the 4th are there uh, in each power. So i to the 30th is i to the 4th to the 7th power, because I multiply those exponents, times i squared. i to the 4th is 1, and 1 to the 7th is 1. And i squared is negative 1. So the whole thing boils down to negative 1. i to the 104th is i to the 4th to the 26th power, which is 1 to the 26th power, which equals 1. All right, so we define a complex number. And a complex number is in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. Uh, the imaginary component is the bi part, and a is our real component. Um, and we have different ways that we can combine complex numbers. So the first example, we're just adding two complex numbers. So we combine the real terms and the imaginary terms. So we get negative 4 with 8 plus negative 12, and we get 7i plus 11i is 18i, and that's as far as we can go. When we multiply complex numbers, it's very similar to um, foiling something if we had binomials. So I do my first and get negative 14. The outside gives me 21i. The inside gives me 10i. And then the last piece is 15i squared. But we have to remember that i squared is negative 1. So when we simplify it, we get 15 times negative 1. Combining our terms gives us 1 plus 31i. So again, when we're adding or subtracting them, we just add and subtract the real components. But multiplying them, uh, we use FOIL. Dividing them is a little bit different. So we have a standard form. Um, where we don't have any imaginary components in a denominator. Just like if we're rationalizing a, a fraction where we have root 3 in the denominator, we, we get rid of that root 3 by uh, what was the process called rationalizing it. It's similar in complex numbers, but instead of rationalizing it, we multiply by what's called the complex conjugate. So the complex conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi. And if I wanted to take 2 divided by 1 plus 3i, and get rid of the imaginary components in the bottom, I would multiply by 1 minus 3i and 1 minus 3i, which is the complex conjugate. And that's just a fancy way to multiply by 1. I work everything out. The bottom reduces, so the numerate, sorry, denominator reduces to that. I plug through it, and I get 2 tenths minus 6 tenths i. That is my standard form for an imaginary number or a complex number. The next one, the complex conjugate of the denominator is 2 plus i. I multiply it through and reduce everything as far as I can take it. All right, so my i squared would reduce to negative 1, and I'd add those together and be left with 1 fifth of 7 plus i. The next one, the complex conjugate is negative i, because that's really 0 plus i. So I multiply everything through and I'm left with 2 minus 5i. My last one, it looks scary, but it's the same idea. My complex conjugate is root 2 plus 5i. I multiply both the top and bottom by that, and I'm going to get through and simplify uh, all my components. All right. Another piece that we're going to look at is simplifying square roots. Um, so this is very similar to algebra class. These are just examples from algebra. I'm looking for factoring it. And then I look at my perfect squares and reduce those. Um, so the first one reduces to 6 root 5. If I look at my next one, uh, it reduces to uh, x root, or sorry, 2x squared times y to the fifth. And remember that y to the fifth is uh, because y to the fifth squared, and I can undo that. My next one, I break it down into my factors. 
And I could deal with that y to the fifth under the parentheses if I changed it to uh, y to the fourth times y, and then y to the fourth would simplify further. <clears throat> Just like that. All right. If I'm multiplying uh, square roots and they're both positive, then I can combine them. So this becomes square root of 80 times 32. I work it out, uh, combine everything that I can, and I get 16 root 10. Same thing with the next one. Uh, I combine it because they're both positive, and I can simplify from there. And that x to the third could be reduced further as x squared times x, and I would get an x outside the parentheses, outside the square root. All right, it's a little different when I have an, uh, a negative number in my square root. So that's where my complex numbers come in. So the square root of negative 15 becomes uh, 15 times negative 1, and then I expand my square root symbol. Root negative 1 is i, so I get i root 15. Similar for root negative 27, I factor it, I break apart my factors, and I reduce it to 3i root 3. Same thing for my next piece, I pull out all my factors, and I could take that y, square, that y cubed again and break it into y squared times y and pull that piece out. Multiplying across is very similar, uh, I get i squared, and i squared is negative 1, so I get negative 12. Now, this next one is the one we really have to be careful with. It's very tempting to combine our components and get the square root of negative uh, 5 times negative 20 and get 100, but it's not going to work out to be true. Uh, if I break it into its components, I get i squared times root 5 times root 20. I can then, because those are both positive, 5 and 20, combine it into square root of 100, which becomes uh, negative 1 times 10 or negative 10. So why can't I combine it from the start? Well, if we took an example of uh, i equals negative root negative 1, multiply both sides by i, which is defined as root negative 1. If I combine that right side, I get the square root of negative 1 times negative 1, which is the square root of 1, which is 1. And I have that negative 1 equals 1, which is not true, which is why I can't combine those that way. And then we have some more patterns uh, within i that we can simplify. Um, Again, looking for how many times does i to the fourth go into something, uh, and then multiplying out all of our components. We have examples there. All right, lastly, this is really what we've been building towards is solving quadratics. So if I have x squared plus 4 equals 0, I'm going to have to have an imaginary component because I'm going to somehow need a negative uh, number once I square x. So I solve it as I normally would. I move the, all the numbers to the side, isolate the x, and then take the square root and get x is a square root of negative 4. Well, applying what we just learned, that means the square root of negative 1 times square root of 4. Negative 1 is i, the square root of 4 is 2, so my solution is 2i. I could check that if I wanted to. Uh, I plug in uh, 2i for x, I square it, and get 4i squared plus 4. i squared is negative 1, and it comes out to be 0 equals 0, so my check works out. The next one, uh, I factor out a 6 and get x squared plus 7 equals 0. By our 0 products theorem, that means that this piece has to be 0. I set it equal to 0 and solve for x. x is the square root of negative 7, which becomes root 1, root negative 1 times root 7, or i root 7.